The cast of characters in Silent Hill tends towards dark color palettes. Browns, blacks, and blues. Lisa Garland, however, stands among them as vividly and visually different. Long blonde hair and a bright red jacket with matching shoes make her the most colorful figure in the first game. The choice of red as her brightest color is an obvious one. The color of blood, a subtle hint of the terrible fate that's to come. And perhaps a tie-in to her profession as a nurse. She is bloodstained, yet stands out as bright and beautiful against the terrible darkness of Silent Hill. This belies her true nature, her innocence and guilt, the fact that she is both a victim and a party to the horrors Alessa suffered. Her position as a unique character doesn't stop there. No one else is quite as strange and hard to understand as her. She appears out of nowhere and disappears just as mysteriously, gives vague hints as to her fate and her origin, but it's never confirmed what she is or how she arrived in the other world. We know she was Alessa's nurse, but not how she died or became trapped here. She insists she's like them, most likely referring to the other nurses and doctors, but it's obvious that she's not. She still has individuality. She isn't possessed by any kind of parasite. Yet she is trapped in the town hospital, just like all the others. She is the only major character to appear in Harry's dreams. Sequences where he passes out, awakens with Lisa, only to pass out again and reawaken where he was before. This reinforces the unreality of her character, the strange, almost dreamlike quality of Lisa Garland. Her name, Lisa, is a shortened form of Elizabeth and means promise or oath of God. The first name is taken from a horror actress, the second from Judy Garland, famous for her role in The Wizard of Oz. The quote associated with her name says that the character lost her way in a dreamland, meaning Oz, implying that Lisa, too, is lost in a world of dreams. There are also tragic connections between Lisa and Judy. Judy Garland struggled with fame and drug addiction from a young age and died of an overdose at 47. Perhaps this is why Lisa is given the dream of being an actress in Silent Hill Origins. The first hospital level is aimed entirely at meeting Lisa. The key that's found in Alessa's sick room leads to the locked lounge where we first meet her. The connection between the sick room and the nurse, between Alessa and her caregiver, is obvious from the start. Given that we've been following Alessa around town, it's possible she led Harry to Lisa on purpose, to someone she trusted. To give Harry a second opinion on the town besides Dahlia's, or perhaps to give him the chance to help her. Perhaps both. Ultimately, the game can be beaten without her. Lisa does not give any necessary items or information that isn't shared by others. Her scenes are added to be purely atmospheric, adding more to the haunting nature of the game. It's hard to imagine Silent Hill without them. Her scenes are eerie and strange. We first find Lisa hiding under a table where she crawls out on all fours like an animal and leaps at us, only to lean away and smile. It's unsettling. Later, Harry awakens from lying on the floor in front of her, and the camera pans up to show her twitching smile, the mask she wears cracking. From the beginning, the feeling of wrongness is reinforced from every angle. Something with Lisa is just not right. But Harry cannot see it. He is literally facing away from Lisa in one scene. But we can. The dramatic irony of building up her character as a subtly odd and unique person, while Harry clings to her as one of the few normal people in town, adds so much to the story and Lisa's role in it. What is her role in the story? Given the best ending, she seems to follow in the footsteps of generations of Japanese female characters before her, the vengeful female spirit. It's a tradition that is more than 1,000 years old, 
with prototypes of the idea appearing in the tales of Genji in the Heian period. In the story, the jealous spirit of one of the main hero's former lovers kills her replacement in revenge. Vengeance is at the heart of these tales, usually of a wife or lover scorned. Ghost stories have long been popular in Japan, and the idea that spirits who were wronged would return to seek justice has existed just as long. Likely the most famous of these is the tale of Okiku, a young woman wrongly murdered by a man she refused, thrown down a well to her death. The folk tale was adapted into various versions, even inspiring such films as The Ring, but they all involve the woman's ghost returning because of the injustice of her death. Not all the tales of female ghosts focus on vengeance. One tale involves a samurai returning home to his beautiful wife, but after one last night together, he awakens to find he spent the night sleeping with a skeleton. She had died while he was away. Many of the ghost tales involving young women focus on these themes. Lost love, betrayal, a young life cut tragically short, and the emotions which drive these ghosts to return to haunt the living. Lisa is almost certainly no longer alive. Very little in the town is. And despite her lack of injuries or a parasite, it's possible, even probable, that she too was already killed. It may be that Alessa's fondness for the woman has protected her spirit from the transformative power of the town. Why she is the way she is, we'll likely never know. But it's easy to assume her death was at the hands of Michael Kaufman, either directly through murder or indirectly through the abuse and manipulation he put her through during her time as Alessa's nurse. In Lisa's story, both sides of the traditional ghost story come to life, the gentle and the vengeful. With Harry, Lisa seeks comfort and support. She tries to avoid thinking too hard about how she came here or what's happening, growing upset when she does. She asks Harry to stay with her to ease her loneliness and is disappointed when he constantly leaves. Her appearance in his dreams might even relate to this desire to be close to and be loved by him. Dream lovers are a longtime fictional theme of Japanese literature, with the idea of being in love and seeing the one you long for in dreams being used as a theme in poetry as early as the 9th century. This version of Lisa is looking for what she missed in life, love and companionship, denied to her since she died too soon. Her last scene with Harry involves reaching out to him one last time, and when he still rebuffs her, her spirit cracks. She loses hold of herself and devolves into a full ghost, covered in blood and angry. The vengeful ghost is this version, soaked in blood with a deadened gaze. The blood pouring from her face in some ways resembles a fictional trope in the East, wherein severe injury to the soul causes a person to bleed from all orifices eyes, nose, mouth, and ears. This is a wound on her spirit, not her body that's bleeding, a cut Harry unknowingly inflicts in his fear of her strange behavior. The story might have been very different if he hadn't pushed her away. In the best ending of the game, we see Lisa one last time, rising from the ground as a vengeful spirit, much as Okiku rose out of her well, or an Onryo rising from her grave. She leaps at Kaufman, clinging to his back and dragging him away, a demon dragging him to hell. This is her vengeance realized, the arc of her ghost story completed, as she disappears into the fog with her prey. This interpretation of Lisa as a continuation of the Japanese ghost story has even more credence when you consider what came years later, the last game of the Silent Hill series, P.T. There is no doubt that the female ghost of that game is a modern Onryo, returned to seek revenge for her death at her husband's hands. The character's name is Lisa, and she's even seen wearing one red high-heeled shoe. Two obvious connections to what we can call Silent Hill's first, but hardly last, vengeful female ghost.